Hello everybody, welcome back to the Brothers Goom Dark and another unit focus. Today we are talking about the biggest linchpin um, for my Eldari forces generally. Um, a couple times I will take them without this unit, but usually the way I run my Eldari, Wraith Blades are my main roadblock um, that I take. Sometimes a Wraith Lord or a Wraith Seer can fill this a little bit, but Wraith Blades fill the best. So Wraith Constructs are, if you don't know, they're essentially Kind of like what Dreadnoughts are for the Imperium, but in a slightly different way. They are dead warriors whose souls are in these uh, gemstones, uh, which are connected to the Infinity Spirit, uh, the Infinity Circuit. But in times of dire need, they are removed and put inside a Wraith Construct. And these can be yeah, Wraith Guard, Wraith Blades, Wraith Lords, Wraith Seers, or maybe even a Wraith Knight. Um, and they, yes embody these race constructs and go march once more into war. So this is, Eldari generally like the idea of leaving their dead at peace, as I'm sure you and I do as well. Um, but in times of great strife, it is necessary that they go to war. Uh, and none so more than the Ayandan, because they all got killed, basically. Um, through various chaos endeavors and high fleets and things. So Barry are in a bit, uh, sorry, not Barry, Ayandin are in a bit of trouble. Um, so they generally rely on the Wraith Constructs more than any other of the craft worlds. So today we are discussing, as I say, uh, Wraith Blades. Now there's two ways to take Wraith Blades, um, but we'll get into that in a second. We'll just go through stat line first. So you can take them in units of five to 10, uh, their movement fives so are slower than your regular Ardari, um, which is, makes sense. They're sort of these slowed spirits in these race construct forms. Their weapon skill three, their ballistic skill three, their strength five, their toughness six. So again, very different from your regular Ardari there. This is a strong, tough unit, um, which you don't often see in the Ardari force. They're generally very hard hitting, very fast, but fragile. So this is something different and can fill holes in your old Ari force that uh, maybe otherwise couldn't be. Uh, there are three attacks each, their leadership nine, and they have a three up save. And then you have, yeah, your flavor uh, of what you want to give them. So the base option is ghost swords. So they get two of these um, and the ghost swords grant them plus one strength. So they're now up to strength six, which is nice. Uh, they're AP minus three, damage one, and then each time the bear fights, it makes two additional attacks with this weapon. So that's up to five attacks. So if you just a unit of five of them, 25 attacks, hitting on three, strength six, AP minus three. That's gonna cause trouble for a lot of stuff. And again, that's not, it's not like they're easy to shift either. They're toughness, toughness six with three wounds, and they come with the wraith bone form. So each time an attack is allocated against a model in this unit, subtract one from the damage characteristic. So. They're sort of like a dreadnought, and that when you've got many of them, they become really hard to chew through. If you're shooting at a wraith, a wraith lord, and you, you know, shoot a las cannon at it, and you cause five wounds, and that just comes four, you can live with that. Um, but when you're shooting at wraith blades, and say you shoot them with something that's damage three or even damage two, because you've got to put that bigger firepower into the big stuff can become really hard to chew through. And you know, if you decide to focus all your big heavy weaponry on them, then you're not dealing with, you know, the Eldari tanks or the or the other bigger wraith constructs. So I think they're a really, really good unit. And when you take them as a Yandin, uh, they just become even better because they're reducing AP minus one and AP minus two by one. So you just can't even put small arms fire into them that way because then they've just got a really good save. And if you stick them in cover, it's a two up save. So they're really good. Um, and if you give them the ghost swords, they come in at... Do, 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 do. Where are you? Uh, elites. Ghost swords. Uh, 40 points. So they come in at 200 points with the ghost swords. And for next are 5 points a model, um, which will take you up to 225 if you've taken a unit of 5. Uh, are the Ghost Axe and Force Shield. So this is how I generally run them, um, just because they do, I don't need this unit to be in terribly killy in my army. I have other things which will do the damage. I just need this unit as a roadblock uh, for the most part. So the Ghost, ghost Axe gives you plus two strength, so strength seven. 
AP minus three, damage two. Um, you don't get the extra two attacks, so there's still just three attacks each. 15 churning up, so pretty good for a damage two weapon. And then you have, importantly, the four in one save though. So if your opponent does decide, okay, I really want to deal with this unit, I'm going to put my heavy fire and my last cannons into them, suddenly you're blocking 50% of those last cannon shots that go, or whatever it is, 50% of those shots that go through um, those you know high AP shots with that in one save. It makes them incredibly, incredibly hard to shift. And yeah, with that damage reduction included, even those wounds that get through, you know, it might be that your opponent only rolls a three for their damage on that missile launch or a last cannon, which then becomes just a two. So they've not even killed one wraith blade with it. So they can be really, really annoying to shift. And then there's extra things you can do to make them even tougher to shift. So if I'm running at least two units of small wraiths, then a spirit seer is a must for me. Um, and Spirit Seer has some useful psychic powers. So Protect and Jinx has long been one of the most useful ones in the Eldari book. A lot of people, if they're gonna run a Warlock, they'll stick it on their Warlock because it helps keep things like Shining Spears and other units alive. Um, it's not as good as it used to be because it used to affect Invuns as well, but it's still very, very powerful. So Protect and Jinx, uh, just the Protect option. Select one Eldari Craft World Core unit. Oh yeah. Wraith Blades are core, uh, within 18 inches of the Psyker, until the start of your next Psyker phase, improve the save characteristic of models in that unit by one. So you can have a two up, you're not even in cover yet, but you can have a two up save, you're just an AP minus one and AP minus two in that unit if you're running Iandin. Stick them in cover, suddenly you've got a one up save, and they just, they can become a real, real nuisance for your opponent. So if you run two of those, which I sometimes like to do, um, you can really just block whatever your opponent is is rushing at you, whether it's Terminators, whether it's Chaos Possessed, whatever, um, Turned Warriors, they will not wipe out a unit in one round of combat. That's just not, not what they do, but they will win the war of attrition in general. If characters and things don't get involved in that combat, there's not many combat units in the game. If you're running a similar size, five versus five, that'll win out that combat. They will just slowly churn them away with the, when they've got these buffs on them. The other thing you can do if you are running a Spirit Seer, which as I say, I generally am, uh, if I'm running at least two units of mini race. I find the Spirit Seer isn't so important with the big race, um, but for the little ones, he definitely is because of his ability, Spirit Mark. So while friendly um, Craftwood Spirit Host core units are within six inches of this model, each time you make makes an attack, um, reroll wound rolls of one. That's very nice. Um, you know, now they become slightly better in combat. So if you've got an Autark and a Spirit Seer around, they're rerolling ones to hit and they're rerolling ones to wound. Suddenly they become much more reliable. On top of that, if you're running Ayandin, which as I say, I generally am, well, always am, you can take, which I generally always do, again, if I'm running at least two units of these guys, even if I'm running one unit, I'd probably take this. The Citronum of Iandin. Um, so if I wasn't running a Spirit Seer, I'd probably stick this on my Far Seer. Um, Iandin model only. In your command phase, you can select one friendly Iandin Spirit Host unit within nine inches of the bearer. Until the start of your next command phase, add one to the attacks characteristic of models in that unit. Suddenly you've got four attacks with those axes, or six attacks each if you're running them with the swords. Suddenly that sword unit now becomes a real combat powerhouse. Strength six, AP minus three. You're only damage one, but you don't care when you've got that many attacks. You're running 30 attacks, hitting on threes, rerolling ones to hit, potentially rerolling ones to wound. They become very nice. And that's mostly what I've got to say about them. The last little bit, um, which can be useful for them, uh, is, so you've got Tears of Isha, which, could be useful. Um, use a stratagem in your command phase, collect, select one Wraith, wraith Construct uh, model in your army. That model gains D3 Lost Wounds. If the selected model is in six inches of a Spirit Seer model, um, you gain the automatic three. That's probably best for your bigger uh, Wraith Construct units, but it's there should you need it. Should you really need that unit to stay alive and one's on one wound, you can buff them up and suddenly your opponent's now got to re-go re through those two wounds. For one CP, 
sure, that, that might be situational when that's useful. I don't think I've ever done it on a mini Wraith unit, but it could be useful. Um, the other thing is the Ayandin specific stratagem, uh, which, where are you? Do, do, do. Is a guided race site. Um, so you use the stratagem in your shooting or fight phase. Select one Ayandin Spirit Seer model from your army and one friendly Ayandin Spirit Host. So that's all your Wraith constructs. Um, until the end of the phase, that Spirit Host unit is considered to be within range of the Spirit Seer for the Spirit Mark. So you don't necessarily need to have your Spirit Seer next to them for that reroll once the wound. They can be off going doing their own thing and you can still get that reroll once the wound, which can be very very nice. Um, generally my uh, Wraith Blades are front and centre at the start of my force, so they are very close to my buffing units, like my Autark and my Spirit Seer and Farseer. Um, oh yeah, that's another thing. Yes, Farseer, if you run Fortune, you can stick that on them as well, so then they're ignoring any wounds that do get through on a 5+. plus. It's just become even tougher again. Um, yeah, and they can just... It's, a very strong buffing unit. So they are generally at the core of my force, but sometimes later in game, as the board begins to spread out, they can be, you know, even just three of them, two or three of them left, they can be, you know, trusted to go off in search of, you know, that unit of devastators that are on the backfield, and they can take the firepower that's coming in, and then they just engage them. And even if two of them don't kill it, they've engaged that, that shooter unit at the back of the board. So I find them a very, very important unit for me. They probably are my key, my most important unit that I run. Some games I won't run them just because I like to mix things up, but when I do, they're usually the main powerhouse of my force and they usually do well in game. Anyway, that's us for today. Hope you enjoyed this, uh, this unit focus and we'll be back again soon. Catch you then.